Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Another beautiful day. Let's get to it. I got a surprise to show y'all. Remember when I wanted to put a super secret engine in my R32 four-door? Well, I got something for you. And we are back here in Sacramento at Sac City because they have facilitated the best Nissan modern engine for your boy. Oh wow. Oh wow. Look who that long time no see, huh? You want to see that motor? Yes, it's I do. It's been a while. It's been a while. No, someday, someday. Morning fellas. Morning, morning. Morning, what's up, Playboy? Don't Trent, ask did I dap right, him up because right it was black. Which one is it? Uh right here. Hold on, he's gonna show me. Is this? Yeah. Is this a HR? I'm, I'm sure. Oh man, you playing with me. You playing with me. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh Lord, he got wow! You got everything. Yeah, okay. Literally, this whole row is 350. Really? Yeah, every single one. Uh oh. Uh oh, everybody! Oh, it's here! Bam! This one's yours. This is it? Yup. Now everybody, you know what you're thinking. What the hell are you doing? I wanted to HR swap my 32 for three reasons. Number one, simplicity. There's too many people building cars that say we're gonna keep it simple and do too much. Number two, it's a Nissan, a Nissan engine. And number three, I always wanted a JDM Skyline. And this is as close as I'm getting to a 350 GT Skyline. Not the G35, but this one right here. He been looking for this engine forever. That is a good point right there. That is technically the JDM Skyline, so. So technically I am. You're like <laughs> retrofitting a JDM Skyline into our 32. Yes, sir, yes, yeah. sir. And. This right here is the epitome of the VQ arsenal. Better than the 37 for boosting, better than the DE for obvious reasons. Right this is a 37? That's a 37, that's a 35. They look alike, but they're definitely slightly different. This one has the control solenoids over here in the back, which sometimes stick out of the hoods and stuff, but they figured out ways to get away on that. And you see, that's why I went with the HR 35, because all this stuff on the back, it requires a second ECU. So. Yeah, I don't I don't want to do yeah. that. And this is this is perfect. Mr. Sack City himself came through. Get and loaded up. Man. Man. Boy oh boy. Boy oh boy oh boy. Mr. We've been waiting like a month or two. Bro, George and I have been planning this ever since I told him I wanted to HR swap something. And he told me, I got you, just be patient. And this was at the beginning of summer. Were. And I and I and was. You were. Thank you, thank yep. you. Look, damn, there's got brand new sensors and everything. And you needed the brake pedal too, right? Or the gas uh, Gas, I need the gas pedal and um, I don't, you got headers for this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll give those to you. That's not a problem. Okay. These right here. So. Okay, bet, bet. Yeah, unless you're gonna go aftermarket. No, I don't, I don't know how that works okay. with this swap, but uh, man. Man, thank you. Oh, of thank course, you, bro. Oh. I'm glad I could help. Man, so if y'all ever need Nissan parts, this man right here will ship. He would have shipped this to me, but I had to come get it myself. He said you had to see it in person, so it wasn't it wasn't bad for yeah. a seven hour drive. Yep, yep. Ah, oh, man. Cool. Let's get you loaded up. You're with the truck. Yeah, I've got. Nice. I got. I'm glad you didn't come with like a Versa or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> we get those all the time. So essentially, you guys, this is when everything's buttoned up on it. With the harness and everything on it this is how it look we'll be using the jk cd version so the difference is i believe this has an internal slave and the actual bell housing is different so if you see on this engine on my car since it's right hand drive um the header will go around pretty much the steering shaft right there and the cool thing is the starter is on the left side if you guys remember my ls swap when the starter is near the steering shaft on any of these right hand drive swap cars it, it is a nightmare so that's why the number one reason as well we went with the hr instead of a vq just the whole thing is better it revs higher hence hr and it does everything better so we'll probably be using the new uh, either this new serial nine short shift relocation kit, or I might just go get the young GK Tech one. But we'll see. But for now, we got the engine. Yeah. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh, it's gonna be all kinds of mischief happening now, boys and girls. There we go. That should look brand new. All right, everybody, so we got the VQ engine here. Aaron's doing the preventative maintenance. So do you want to explain exactly what you're doing so I don't have to? <laughs> okay, so on the HR motors, any HR, BHR motor, a common problem with these is the oil gallery gaskets. The gaskets are a paper gasket, and they essentially blow out, and then you lose oil pressure, and goodbye engine. So we're preventing that by taking it apart. We're gonna change them out with some new jammies, uh, change the water pump while we're at it, 
seal it up and throw it in the car. Nice. So we went ahead and got some parts from Z1 Motorsports. So if you guys were wondering, where do you get these oil galley gaskets from? We recommend you get them from here. I actually bought these. They didn't sponsor this. This is just was recommended by Aaron. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why? Uh, it's a Nissan OEM and it's like up to date parts. So if you're going to get anything that I do with any parts like this, I'm going to do OEM. And so it's easier to use like their updated thing parts for this. So that's why. There we go. I need to open this box. So, Mr. Aaron, yes, sir. how would you do this if you was normally at the crib? Uh, first off, it's going to take a whole lot longer. I use brake clean, a Brillo pad, uh, the magic of fairy dust. I mean, you name it. Hopes, prayers, dreams. Damn. Oh, shit. What the fuck just fell off? Uh, just a piece of wood. Okay. There we go! There we go! That's why he's the goat! See, too, this is a perfect candidate to show, though, exactly what would have happened. So you can see that you can see the gasket out here. Uh -huh. You see the gasket out here. So it's completely broken behind it. That means that there's space between here. We, we would have put it in and it would have blown up. Oh, really? Yep, for real. You can see, like, this is this is all supposed to be behind this cover. It's actually, like, broken, broken. Oh, hell yeah, Aaron, you did that. So, luckily, we didn't get frustrated and just let this be like how it's supposed to be. So on a good note, Mr. Aaron came through. It, this little, this little, this kit, this whole shit, the, the gaskets. Saves lives. Saves lives. The gas, which was like 80 bucks, the water pump was like another 80 bucks. And shit all together with express shipping was like, like 220 bucks. So that's not bad, mind you, this wasn't, this, okay, Z1 didn't sponsor this. I just solely got parts from them because they had great deals and low key was available. Everybody else was out of stock. So there we go. I mean, one afternoon to be able to do this and know that your motor's gonna last, like anybody that has HR motor, I tell them, like, check this first because it's gonna happen. It always happens. So. And then the water pump, Aaron suggests I do it because the cover's gotta come off anyway. Well, yeah, also the timing chain. Since the timing chain's off and the timing chain runs this one, that's why we swap these anyway. So okay. these are actually another common problem. A lot of people will say that they see coolant running behind their AC compressor, and it's actually because the water pump that we pull starts seeking out behind here and then you got to change it anyway so bro the, well just do it. the more i look at this i'm like man why are ls is so simple right the water pump on all the accessories are out bro but at least with this it's one and done yeah so like we're doing it and then we know we're not gonna have to worry about it and we'll get beat on it bro half of it stayed on there you would have had all kind of issues for real All right, kids, today on Keeping It Simple with Uncle Gary, we're gonna to get to the simple sea time skyline. Before we can put our engine in, the first thing we need to do is suspension. We're gonna to have to cut out these shock tire mounts so we can adapt the McPherson style S13 slash S14 suspension to this chassis. Now stock skylines come with a double A arm, which is great, but for the application we're using today, we're not gonna be using that. And the reason why is with S chassis, everyone has one. And what we have is a skyline. So if we adapt S chassis suspension to this car, if we break at the track, we're more than likely to find somebody with the parts for this let's get into it so what we'll be using is our counter steer s13 adaption plate so what we're going to have to do is cut around this shock tower up here and then once we remove this this will go in its place that way we can adapt the s13 suspension now it still does have the hole for the camber plates which makes this easy to use unfortunately skylines don't have that ability since it is double a arm so if you were even to use this it wouldn't move very much like the s chassis so let's cut into this frame of this car of the shock tower and get to work shout out to counter steer llc for blessing us with these beautiful plates if you're thinking about doing it to your car we would recommend these heavily first order of business is we're gonna measure an inch out, mark a line around, and cut it out. Get your favorite measuring device, mark an inch, and just draw a nice line. Now that Matthew's drawn his guideline to install his counter steer plate, he will use a grinder to get all of this out and then we should be able to see where exactly this will fit up. 
Now remember kids, when doing anything causing cutting, shearing, or any type of power tool, it is always important to use your safety glasses. And through your safety glasses. Well kids, regarding safety, I'm gonna teach you a few things you need to know to keep your eyes safe from danger. Number one, find a good pair of safety glasses. Now glasses aren't safety glasses. You see how this has overall wraparound protection it's causing any type of material to fall in your eyes is right here. This guard will keep you safe. When you wear regular glasses, there's nothing stopping anything from flying in your eye. I've seen it happen in the aerospace industry. <laughs> in the aerospace industry, I had a homie, real talk, I had a homie who wore some regular safety glasses and one of the wires from the wire wheel fell in his eye and that nigga was screaming and shit. Ah! And we was laughing because at the end of the day, he tried to get money from the company and it didn't work because they did a little investigation, found out he wasn't wearing safety glasses. Now, if he was wearing some regular safety glasses, then he'd be safe. So what you're gonna do is give your safety glasses to your friend. Here, friend, thank you. Put them on and look stylish. Now, these aren't your grandfather's safety glasses. These are the heat wave safety glasses with interchangeable lenses. That's right. So you can look good while you cut good, while you do everything else good. And all my friends that do extracurricular activities, if you're having some type of transactions with the opposite sex, make sure she puts those on. Don't want her to go blind. So Matthew's cut the shock tower. You can notice there's a considerably amount missing. Now, we are at the point of no return, which means if we fuck this up, we can't go back. Back to business. I wish I could see if these are fogging up. We got us a JDM Skyline engine. VHR 35 from a V35. 350 GT Skyline, or as y'all know here in America, the Edgar Cut Low Credit Score G35. We got our brand new transmission from the Puente Nissan. This was about 2,400 bucks. 2,400 bucks, the engine was sponsored. We got ACT clutch and flywheel. They came through, slave cylinder from my boy AA Ron that drifts with the RB. Brand new used zinc coated subframes. So when I say brand new used, they're brand new to me, but they were used. We had to sandblast these and then get them zinc coated. And we got all of them done. All of them done for 250 bucks. Yeah, okay. So remember, this is something simple you could do. If you find, this is our local zinc coater. So the reason I zinc coated is, is because certain things we use for the um, subframe bushings are just harder. And since these are bare metal that were zinc coated, it just makes it easier. Yes, like you can't look, look, look at it, look at it, look at it. Listen kids, I'm gonna tell you one thing. If you're building a drift car this year, step your fucking game up. And I'm not trying to be a dickhead. I'm tired of seeing beat up cars at the track. I understand drift cars drift, but let's have a little poise this year. If y'all wanna make real money, y'all wanna do real boy things, just have a real boy car. I'm not saying you need a Skyline. All I'm saying is you need a clean car. Cause notice when those photographers take pictures of your car, they're not taking pictures of clapped out cars. So Matt went and cut all the little things that were sticking out on the firewall so it doesn't hit us. He cut off a bunch of tabs that came with the car. I don't know what they were for. Now it's time to get our JDM Skyline ready for the clutch, flywheel, and transmission. Are you ready, Mr. Matthew? I'm ready, ready, ready. Ah, ah, ah. There's a transmission <laughs> in here. Peak male performance. Ah, yeah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Get that shit up, baby. Let's go. Get it up. Get it up. Ooh. Last time, I don't think this came with a tool. So that's the puck, right? Oh, 
those yeah. stickers. Right now I'm removing the stock shifter bracket from the JK Trans because we have to install our short shift relocation kit. Now if people don't notice, this is a little bit longer because this is intended for a Z slash G37 slash G35. So what the short shift relocation does, it brings this the kit a little bit closer so it can fit in a different chassis. Now this transmission is made for a different car, but we're gonna use it for this for the end uh, of our, our HR swap to put in the 32. So we must remove all this so we can get that going. But right now we just removed the pin from the shifter. So since we have the stock shifter, you have to remove this pin. So since the short shift relocation kit moves everything a lot closer, this pin is what holds in the actual shifter. So being able to remove it when it brings it closer so we can have it here. If you have this pin slip out your car while you're doing something, it's gonna be the worst experience you've ever had due to it holds the shifter. So think about it, if you shift in, it just comes out easy. And that's what I like about this. The way we messed up when we built the 34 is that we were all doing something at the same time that were different. And I thought I could do this because I did it before and I watched the dude at Serial 9 do it. But the problem was I thought I could do it off memory when I could have just looked it up on the internet to get the instructions. So don't be afraid to ask for help. If you feel stupid, hit Google. That's what it's for. We are YouTube mechanics, which means we YouTube a lot of this shit. <laughs> yeah, we're not professionals. You're not professionals. All right, so now that the pilot bushing is installed, we went ahead and put on the flywheel. Now the next step is to put on the hardware, but before we do that, we want to throw on some thread locker. Now the thread locker pretty much, uh, it's like a safety precaution, it prevents the threads from backing out. Now kids, make sure if you're ever putting on a flywheel to your engine, I'm only using this to drive in the bolts. I'm not torquing it. Make sure you follow the registered torque for these engines or whatever you're doing because stuff like this could over torque your bolts and the last thing you want to do is have bolts stuck in your crank. It's going to be a very bad day. Mr. Matthew, why is it important to wipe the flywheel surface down with brake cleaner? Because the flywheel has a bunch of grease from the assembly line. So we're going to hit it with some brake clean, get all that grease off so that the clutch just has a nice clean mating surface to mm. make to. Generous amount of brake clean. Generous? It's a little bit more than generous. <laughs> That's crazy how greasy it is. Kids, I know some of you may know how to do this, but some of you may not know how to do this. Make sure when you put this in, all the logos face out. We don't want the logos to face in. You're gonna have a really bad day when you put all this together and then you gotta take it apart. You'll know if it doesn't fit. There's only one way to do it. Mm. There we go. Now we just get our pressure plate and our pressure plate bolts, and then we install that in for the one time. Everybody, you see all these like marks? That's all, look at all that oil. But that's just from the manufacturer, is because when they put it together, they must use oil to make sure nothing happens to this. But when you get it, make sure you use brake clean. Don't inhale it, because you will see things you thought weren't real. Oh, bro, you burned my head. Is that the way? That's the way. Let me get the uh, the, the, the wobble wobble. Wobble. It's all in there. There we go. Too scared to use skylines. They just want to cry. Oh no, it costs too much. So. <laughs> So we've successfully torqued down all of the pressure plate bolts. Now our final thing to do is put on the transmission. Hopefully this is easier than doing a 34 because there's no aftermarket kit to deal with. So it should just go on. Yeah, okay. Should, <laughs> it should. Update after how many, like 30 minutes? Oh man, it felt like an hour. We had to shake the junk out of this, but it made it finally. I didn't realize how tall this engine was, the separation from the freaking, the top to the bottom, but we got it in. And now we just gotta get more bolts in and torque them down. And like I said before, on this engine, it should be easier because the starter is right here on the left. 
which means since I'm right hand drive, all of this over here should be clear. So if I've learned anything from doing stuff with the 34, we are going to go around and use this orange Loctite. So the difference between the orange, blue, and red, the orange goes on like red, but breaks like blue, correct? Holds like red and goes, and breaks like blue. So why don't we just use orange on everything? Right, it makes sense. Blue. Well, it's new now, so it's like, oh. that's gonna be the go-to. But we use blue, we use blue and orange on this engine. Um, yeah. Okay. But like most stuff, like suspension, most stuff that we don't want to like really come off, then we'll use orange. And since we're drifting this car, a lot of vibration will come from the clutch kicking. And uh, I'm lost for words. But now it's time to put this engine in the car soon, right, Mr. Matthew? Yeah. Now that we have our whole transmission bolted up, thread locked and tightened in, now it's time to do our zinc subframe. We have our fresh zinc mounted, or we have our fresh zinc coated, what is that? Uh, subframe mounting hardware. Uh-huh. The nuts and the little studs. Mm. Damn, that boy's strong. This is about to look wet. How wet is this? Ha, ha, ha. Get you right. Zap it in real quick, the Zapparino. Ooh! Ooh! Uno mas. There we go. As y'all can see, we've been working into the nighttime. The beautiful zinc coated subframes in, our zinc coated whatever those are in. It looks like a brand new car. Damn near a brand new engine. Matt, are you excited? I'm excited. We got our, uh, I'm ready to go. everything's in here, it's time. We got the everybody in the live, let's pray. Everybody in here, thank you for watching. It's the moment of truth. We got the time lapse going, let's get it. Y'all gotta see this. We got the HR in here. Mind you, the trans is down a little bit, but look at the clearance. Look at the clearance, y'all. We are, we are golden gooses in here. Somewhat, mind you, this engine's just in here, but it's, it's damn near perfect. It's damn near like it's meant to be in here, y'all. I can't make this up. Look at it. This is, this is beautiful. You remember when I got this shell and I was like, I want to put a VQ in here and you were like, No. <laughs> I'm still, no, but hey, it's cool now. Right? Man. Now to see if this is, now we got to look under the car to see how exactly how everything fits because if this works, like how I think it might work, we in trouble. It's in here. And the crazy thing is, since we have experience with like doing swaps with the V8, Look how perfect it is. This isn't even in the way. And, and if we cut, like Matt, like uh, George at Hexa said, if we cut that, then we have enough room. Yeah. I feel like we should cut it and extend it further down, and then that way everything fits. We'll throw a D-band, like yeah, cut it, make it like a 90 or something mm -hmm. like that, and throw a D-band on it. But I want to be, put a little damper in our parade here, but uh, we got to test this out. We might need to take off this bracket or cut this to put the, uh, so oh, what is this? We can cut it. It's just pl it looks. It, it looks appears plastic. plastic. Yeah, but it's crazy. Like when you look at look at the back of the firewall, everything that we would need to reach. Like even say say if like the car broke and we needed to do a transmission job. Look how everything is oh, like yeah, right plenty there. Of room. Plenty of room. Brother, plenty. on this side it's a little bit different. But I don't, it looks like there's more there's more space on this side. Well, I think, remember, it's also not. Like, oh yeah, it's not straight. even, yeah. But it's in here, should we try to put one of the, the filters on or just call it a night? Let's call it a night, dude. All Maybe. right. Hell yeah. So we got this far, the next step, shifter, suspension. Shifter, suspension, we got some brake lines, uh, brake booster, clutch master cylinder, Everybody was like, why a VQ? Why a VQ? So if we step back, if we step back, and I never, if I ever told you, if I told somebody that they didn't know nothing about cars, right? If you were just getting into cars and you looked at this, you would think this engine belongs in here. <laughs> like, bro, it's per we might have to cut a little. 
out the hood for this to clear. But yet again, we don't have to put the, um, the cover on. And then there's still like a half a foot of space in the front for fans and everything. Oh, with the radiator? Mm -hmm. see that yeah. So if we try it with the radiator. I just want to be able to put a big, big, you know, big fans. Look at how much space it is. Oh, dude, no way. Look like that's it. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. Y'all gotta see this. Look how much space we have for cooling. Dude. That's all the space we have for cooling. So technically, technically, Matt, if we ever did a V, a HR or something swap in the 33, yeah. this is this is what it more or less would look like. Yeah. So you definitely have more room because it's an R chassis. Because I know it, like the, the the shock tower to the front of course support is longer. You know. And you wanna know one thing else? This engine is lighter than an RV. Because it's aluminum. Yeah. And the trans and I'll tell you one thing, this transmission is a hell of a lot lighter than a all-wheel drive trans. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But everybody who stayed tuned and watched and got to witness history in the making, bro, look at it. Look at it, y'all. Y'all stuck through the